to start with, I've stamped the ship in sail, or the ship at sea stamp from 2Js, onto a piece of acetate using embossing ink. I've used the Isink embossing ink and I've used their detailed black powder just to heat set it to give me a definite finished image. But what we're going to do is we're going to colour this from behind. So I'm going to bring in my ink mats to protect my surface and I've turned it upside down so I'm now working on the back. And what I'm going to do to start with, again, I'm going to take the grey colour, which is called Thunder Cloud. So I'm going to take a little bit of the grey. Let's bring my little palette in. This little palette is a mini ink blending mat that comes with the Crafts 2 kit. You get the A4 one and this little one, which is great to use as a palette. So I'm just going to lay that down. I'm then going to take some of the white and I'm going to lay that down next to it so that I've got those two colours and that allows me to lighten or darken it and this time I'm going to take my water brush and this is why I like using the Crafts 2 water brushes if I don't squeeze too hard the valve in there stops water flowing too much so if I just dry off the end it's like I've got a dry washable brush so I'm just going to blend those two colours together and give me a really nice light grey shade and all I'm going to do is go in direct, so I'm adding no water to the colour at all. And I'm just going to colour in all of the sails using the white. And you have to remember that whatever colour you're using first is the colour that will be shown through on the back. So any highlights that you want to do have to be done before you work in with the other colours. So you may want to stamp out one of these and have it working um, next to you in the right way around so that you've got a reference guide because you're painting backwards from behind. I know this stamp quite well now, so I don't actually need that, but I would suggest that you may find that's useful. So I'm just going to go through and finish off doing all of these. So I'm just going over with this colour I've mixed in the middle, bringing in each time a little bit more grey or a little bit more white, depending on what I need. And you may think you're doing quite a thin coating. And it, I mean, it is fantastic to have the ability to paint onto acetate. It's what I absolutely love about these inks. But you may think, oh, well, you know, the coating's probably a little bit thin. Don't worry about that because we're going to put a background onto it anyway. So if I turn that over, hopefully you can see there where I've got the ships, the sort of the sails showing up a little bit lighter. So what I want to do next is to just colour in the ship. So I'm going to take some of the roast chestnut or the marron, if you want to do in French. And I want to darken this slightly. So I'm going to take a little bit of black, but this time I'm going to use just... A little touch that's what's so useful about the bottles being like this I'm not even just trying to squeeze a little bit out I can just take out as much as I want and it just lets me darken that shade you can get so many shades with it and I'm going to just put in this stripe here where it's lighter so I'm going to put that stripe in there and pick up some more and I'm just going to roughly go over the rest of the ship so that anything that's seen through shows in the brown. Now, I'm going to put a little bit around this rigging and a little bit in between each sail. I'm not being precise and I'm not being careful. I'm just trying to add a little bit of colour in. So don't worry, this is not something for those people who've got amazing painting skills. Anyone can do this. I'm just almost blobbing colour on. That's why it's so good to be able to colour from behind and do it on acetate. Because for the next sort of 10 minutes or so, if there's something you don't like, you will be able to wipe it off. If I turn that over, you can see now how it works. I've got the brown against the lighter sails. So what we want to do now is put in a little bit of the sea. So to start with, I just want to get some water flowing in my brush and take that brown colour off and dry out my brush slightly. I'm going to pick up the white I've got left and I'm going to dot that on roughly. So I'm just putting dots on. That's all I'm doing in a few places. There we go. 
I'm going to take a little bit of the darker blue. So this one is the celestial blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of that. You can tell what my favourite colours are. I think I've gone through about two thirds of this one. And I'm going to take a little bit of the light blue, which is called stratosphere. Or in French again, blue clair. So we've got that. And I'm going to do exactly the same technique again. I'm going to pick up the colour and I'm going to dot it in. And I've allowed some white to stay on my brush so that I get that. Pick up a little bit of the lighter blue and we just dot that in. And what I'm doing with the lighter blue, I'm going underneath. I'm going to mix them all together just so that I've got, there we go. When I turn it over, the perfect sea. I can see the crashing waves. I can see all those pieces, hopefully that's coming through and you can see there. So what I want to do now is to make the background. So I'm going to take another piece of acetate that's been cut to size. So I'm just going to take a normal A4 sheet. What you would do is you do a full A4 sheet and you'll do one piece with the, with the ship on and one piece for the background. And this time I'm going to take the colours direct. So this is the volubilis and all I'm doing is working stripes over the back using the brush that's in the inks. I'm putting it on definitely and defined. And what this will do is this gives me a lot more solid color than when I use a water brush or a normal brush. I'm going to take just a little bit of the celestial blue and add some darker shades in. But what I'm doing is the darker shades for the celestial blue are more at the top because the sky gets lighter as it gets down or well, that's my impression anyway so I'm going to take some more of that and I'm only going to come about a third of the way down with this celestial blue I'm then going to get a little bit of the grey which is the thunder cloud and I'm going to add some little bits of the thunder cloud in again at the top so I'm just mixing the blues here a little bit in, but again, when I get down to the bottom, I'm being lighter with it. And then finally, going to go in with the lightest blue, which is the stratosphere. And I'm just going to almost fill gaps. I'm putting a lot more of the stratosphere in. At the bottom. So really simple. There we go. So what we need to do next now is just merge these slightly. So what I would do is take my wash brush. So this is another Crafts 2 brush and this is another one of the water brush and these come in three sizes again, small, medium and large. I think I've grabbed the medium here but I would probably use the large. And I'm just gonna get some water out, put some drops of water on flowing and I'm just going to flick my brush across, going top to bottom. Really simple. And what we would do is we would leave that to dry or you can dry it. So I'm just going to bring in the heat gun. Anywhere there's too much water, if you add, while you're drying, a little bit of kitchen roll, it just messes up the sky that little bit more and takes any large patches of water off. So we're just going to give this a dry through. I'm using the lowest speed on my heat gun because although I'm using heat resistant acetate, I don't want to overheat the acetate. I don't want this to buckle too much. So again, at home you would spend a little bit longer doing this and drying it. Or you can just leave it on one side and it will dry in about five to ten minutes naturally. But if you can see, the inks are sticking. The, the inks are, 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 that's it, they're fixed. I've really got to scrub to take any off. So I'm going to take the last bits of water off there. Okay, and we're done. So now I'm simply going to turn that over. 
and you can see there I've already started to get a really beautiful sky and all I want to do is add a few clouds in so I'm going to take some of the white and I want some of the grey the thunder cloud the perfect name for this really genuinely is um, I know sometimes we think the names of colours really don't match what they do, but these are actually really spot on. I'm going to take my water brush and again, clean it off, get any excess water off, pick up the white. And I'm just going to put some clouds in. And all I'm doing is putting blobs down, little blobs. And then I'm going to pull them out with my water brush. Take some of the grey. Add some of the grey on. And it won't make a lot of sense at the moment, but it will do when it's all put together. So we've got a grey, I'm going to take a little bit of white. And I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of white and highlight in those clouds. A little bit of grey underneath. And so that I've got the sky showing with the clouds and when I pop my ship over I've got those clouds looking with the ship floating on top so I would foam mount that over and to get it into the original card so I'll show you that in a second so we've got our background and we've got our ship so the first thing I'm going to do I've cut a piece of white card to seven by seven and I've put on the back some foam tape to mount this away and I've used the press cut stitch dot dies to make myself a little porthole so I'm just going to frame my ship in there I'm gonna stick that down and I will take then my scissors now when I made sure when I was cutting and putting the foam tape on I made sure I put some at the top and the side so that it, the card doesn't dip so we need to do that again because we're going to put another layer on. So again, I'm going to take some foam tape and I'm just going to once again trace around this circle. So if you take, if you've got a decent foam tape and you take the covering off, it will turn a corner beautifully. So we'll just take this right to the end. Don't have to get it exact. And again, to keep the depth going, I need to make sure that the top and the side are in the same area. So I'm going to take what's left of the foam tape and put it along one side and along the top so that it's nicely balanced. And you just want to make sure that when these are revealed that you're not actually um, sticking that down to anything. We then take our background and you can see now how it works through the porthole so we can move it up and down until you find a place you're happy with and then we trim that off and then all i'm going to do is to stick this down onto my card blank so i've got my card blank here now what i'm going to do to make sure it sticks properly i'm going to take the excess off this corner a little bit poking out there which we don't want so let's just trim that off and I'm going to take another piece of foam tape now if you remember we've got two layers there and there we've got two layers in the design so I'm taking one layer pop a second layer on just to secure that corner so that I don't actually have to glue down the acetate as I don't like gluing down acetate and we then simply, I've got this onto an eight by eight card blank, matted and layered with gray and with blue to pick up a little bit of the blue. And we just stick that on. And if I bring that up, hopefully you can see there, you've got the ship and you've actually seen a background behind it. And it's so easy to do with no painting skills whatsoever. And you could simply add a sentiment onto that add a little sentiment block on or something like that. You could embellish this, you could put little bits of string around to make it look more like a porthole or little screws. But that's the basis of how we do that painting on acetate. 